Hey everyone, it's Ten Hypes, and today we're talking about the Pokemon World Championships and Control, and the Control decks that people are playing. So if you don't know, the winning deck was uh, Iron Thorns EX, which is, or Quad Iron Thorns, Quad Thorns, whatever you want to call it, and Iron Thorns EX is a control card, I guess, but the deck is more so a pseudo-control deck, you're taking prizes, and you're not completely controlling your opponent. In fact, some decks you're not really doing much of anything against. So it is a bit of a matchup dependent deck, as are pretty much any control decks. But anyway, so Iron Thorns EX though is definitely a solid deck and a control deck, but it's not like as controlly as Snorlax or Pidgeot Control. Both of those are very controlly. So I won't be talking about Iron Thorns EX in this video, um, except that it does actually kind of cook these other control decks. But yeah, anyway, let's just hop into the you know, the meat of the video where we're talking about control and we're starting with Snorlax because this is the more popular or at least more played control build and it was played four times, uh, although the top placing list was not a Snorlax list, but you have the ability block and if this Pokemon's in the active, your opponent's active can't retreat. It's pretty st simple and straightforward and this obviously is annoying to a lot of decks. So if we look at the metagame at the World Championships, the most played deck was Regidraco V-Star and you can look at the, what are the core cards here? And there are different Pokemon. Kyurem can't attack if it's put into play. Assuming you don't have Colossus Tenacity or like Colossus Experiment in the discard, which you probably don't. Uh, and then also something like, if you look at the energy counts, it looks like it's nine. So if they have Reggie Drake of V, um, then Grass Ogre Pond or whatever, then you're able to, and BBX as well, like, they can't attack with all their Pokemon. They can't attack with three Ogre Pots, you just don't have the energy to do that, so that's the idea there. Um, and that's how you beat most decks. You can just get Pokemon stuck in the active. You can also heal Snorlax and loop at some, so you can give it more HP as well. Your Bravery Charm, only one copy, but then Hero's Cape is the ace spec in this list, and Penny to heal, as well as Picnic Basket, which we'll talk about. But the new card is Zero Six Machinations, forcing your opponent to discard until they have three cards in their hand, which is generally really rough for them, because this means that they have to, um, you know, lose a lot of resources if they have a big hand, which they probably do, because there'll be a lot of passing going on, or digging for resources. And digging for resources is going to force them to draw cards, and drawing those cards is going to do one of two things. It is going to one mean that they have to just like you know draw lots of cards get a really big hand so it's like machination is going to really mess them up or two it is going to mean that all of a sudden they're um like discarding lots of their resources or lost owning them theoretically they could like iono a bunch of times but that seems unlikely so yeah pretty much they're gonna d burn through resources especially if you are zero six machination zing what is this Machination zing. Yeah, I guess I said it right. <laughs> um, if you do that to them. You also have Misfortune, such as an Airy to burn the resources. And you have Chiu EX to discard cards from their deck. Mimikyu and Corstal Mask Ogre Pond EX are walls to different Pokemon. Mimikyu is going to be walling uh, Pokemon EX and V, which are pretty popular. Although, um, I mean, let's take a look at Reggie Draco V Star yet again. Um, we'll take a look at this top four list here. And it plays Canceling Clone, which allows them to get through. And then um, here I'm can. I uh, can't, can't really get through, um, but then they have potentially some other attackers that let them get through. I don't think they were played in these, any of the lists at Worlds, but Giratina V or Kuridon will allow you to get through, so it's kind of weird, but um, and anyways, and then Crystal Mask Ogre Pontiac is going to be walling Pokemon with abilities, so looking again at Reggie Draco V-Star, the most played deck, will be walling the Reggie Drago V Star, and it will also be walling the Cornerstone Mask Ogre Pond EX, but not the Reggie Drago V. So that's a little weird, but it creates some, a pretty interesting matchup there, I think. Um, but it can be kind of complicated as well. Definitely favored Turd's Control because you can wall off most of their attackers and they can't do too much about it, but they can gust stuff like Rodan V, Pidgeot V, GVX, and can knock out Snorlax generally, so you need to be careful as well. Then uh, you have a Covenant Flute to get their Pokemon into play, force them into play, as well as Erica's Invitation. So if they um, are playing Hawlucha, like um, Reggie Draco V-Star list, I'm sure some are playing Hawlucha. So this one plays Hawlucha, and if that's in play, it can't attack ever, can't get taken out of play. So if you get that into play, they'll never choose to play it really. But if they have to play it because of Erica's Invitation or Accompanying Flute, which get that into play, then you're in a good spot because now they can't really do anything about it and they almost just lose. Then you also have Countercatcher to gust stuff up. You need the Pokemon in the active and boss orders as well. You have Arvin as your main supporter, which can get um, items, which get stuff. And then tools, which include four seal stone. It does play three cops of handheld fan. This is important, I believe, against a Gardevoir. Um, and it can be useful for some different things. It's a, it's a, just a control card. Um, and Pokemon League HQ, same thing. Uh, I think 
Pokemon League HQ is kind of interesting, increasing basic Pokemon's attack costs. I haven't seen this played too much in the Snorlax control, but uh, it is pretty good. And then you have Picnic Basket here. And this says heal 30 from each Pokemon. So this is interesting. It allows specifically, I believe, for you to heal your Pokemon. It's good against certain types of spread. It does allow you to heal your opponent's Pokemon and does force you to do that. That doesn't do anything here unless, I guess, if they're guard war, it can, like, throw off the math or it could help them. But that is a thing. And then you also have, um, let's see what else. That's about it. I mean, you have Silene, you have your recovery stuff. You have pretty normal. This is... Honestly, pretty normal control list. Just wanted to explain a lot of the stuff going on here for people who weren't as sure of it. And if you don't entirely understand it, don't worry. Um, as you hear more people talk about it, and you can try the list out for yourself as well, then you'll understand it more. It's not that complicated once you try it out a little bit, but uh, long story short, <laughs> short, just Snorlax, right? And um, that's it. So then this next list is pretty similar. We do see two Rotom Vs, which is nice, allowing you to be more consistent and... Um, yeah, that generally looks to be the idea of this list. We do see two cups and night stretcher and no energies, which is interesting. I think I've played lists pretty similar to this um, in just online. We do see Giacomo and Temple of Sinnoh, which allow you to counter Pokemon with special energy as well. So that's pretty useful because um, Lugia V-Star is a, I think it was the second deck in the metagame. So um, yeah, it was the second deck and um, it, it's a good deck, right? So being able to beat that deck is nice. It doesn't necessarily mean that you always win against it. But it is the way which you can win against, against it and have a chance. Also, this deck is not infinite outside of Pidgeot V. Um, so you can't recover like um, Hero's Cape. But that doesn't really matter that much. Next up, this list looks like um, pretty similar concepts. We do see three Mimikus, though, which in one Fighting Younger Pawn, as well as Mist Energy. So this will be walling off um, Roaring Moon EX really well. Although not the single prizer, so that seems a little scary. That matchup's kind of sketchy. Also, this deck's super terrible against Iron Thorns EX because... Uh, well, no, that's not true. This deck actually is pretty good because you have the three Mimikus. If you only play one Mimikyu, it's really bad against it. The other list played... Yeah, this one just plays one. I uh, just play two Night Stretchers and Team Yells, Chain Pal Pads, so you might be okay, but... It's a little awkward. You're definitely going to be, um, you're probably going to be putting, you have to put some other Pokemon in play and your opponent can knock those out. And Rotom V doesn't work. So I definitely would favor Iron Thorns EX in a matchup like this. In one like this, we have three Mimikus, though you're going to be favored against Iron Thorns EX. And you also have Arda Zones. Again, you're kind of abandoning the Lugia matchup. That one's pretty hard, at least in my experience. That's the hardest matchup for control. Snorlax control specific. Well, no, really any kind of control. So it's pretty hard to defeat. There are certain cards coming out soon that'll help you, but they're not insane. But right now, we, we don't have those cards. Now, uh, this is the top placing list. And by the way, this one plays a secret box, allowing you to get a tool trainer. No, sorry, any, every type of trainer. Tool, stadium, item, supporter. And you discard three cards from your hand. It just helps you set up and adds to consistency. Hero's Cape, in my experience, isn't that. I mean, it's not bad, but it's not like necessary or anything. A lot of people always put Hero's Cape in control. You don't need it, though. But then we have um, Penny, Arvin, uh, four pennies, which is like kind of high, but nothing crazy. Uh, Misfortune Sisters, Airy, stuff like that. Nose versus Six Machinations played here. And then you have um, pretty normal stuff outside of that. We do have the um, special energy counters, which are useful in certain matchups. Only three accompanying flutes, though. Um, but kind of leaning into the fact that Ogre Pond and Mimikyu can win you a lot of matchups really good against. Veggie Draco, Charizard. I'm trying to think through the matchups, but it's good against those two specifically. Uh, I guess Mimikyu is really good against Raging Bolt, Ogre Pond, but it's not insane. Like, let's take a look at the top eight list. This one plays Sandy, Sh San plays Sandy Shocks, which will be a counter, so you're not necessarily okay in that matchup, but you're. it could be worse, right? It's not that bad of a matchup with the Mimikyu's. And then... Um, and Snorlax is you Snorlax, trap other things, and then you Mimikyu, and you kind of switch between the two. Um... And accompanying flute can be really good if you can get Radiant Greninja, stuff like that. But yeah, just pretty straightforward stuff. But Secret Box is really cool. Next up, this is the Pidgeot control list that came in. Okay, you can't see it because these lists are longer, so it doesn't all fit on the screen, at least for me. But here we can see the image, and now we can see Pidgeot control. If you're not familiar with this deck, you use Pidgeot EX, and then you do things similar to the other deck. We see two Rotom Vs, two Mimikus, two Core Storm Mask, Ogre Pond EXs. We see my low deck stopping, scooping up. And instead of Snorlax, we play Pokemon like Wolfspring Mask, Ogre Pond EX, with its attack here, Sob, which says during your opponent's next turn, the defending Pokemon can't retreat, and it does 20. But with Double Turbo, it won't be doing anything, so then you can just trap a Pokemon in the active. My low deck will stop them from playing Professor Turo's Scenario, which is played sometimes, so that's pretty good. Or Penny as well. 
the list also runs Lux Ray as an attacking option and Blood Martial Luna EX. Again, this deck is not going to be super good against uh, Iron Thorns EX, but, you know, that is what it is. Then you also have... Oh, and you can recover Mimic you, but your opponent Iron Thorns EX, if they're you know, in that matchup, they can lost City yet, so that's something to keep in mind. Then there's also um, Radiant Sarmina. That one's really interesting to me. I guess it's just like the... Um, card i don't remember what it's called the picnic basket card i guess and that it heals a bunch of your pokemon and helps again spread things we also see the 60 hp pidgey and the other list we also see that so that's pretty interesting and then um nothing too crazy in this list i mean it's it's interesting though mylotic's definitely a fun card we see zero six machinations back lots of one of supporters unsurprisingly which are very common in lists like this counter cash are being really good um, but pretty similar stuff to the Snorlax list, and all things con being considered, uh, you have Lost City as well for Luxray to deal with certain cards that could be problematic to you as well. Next up, this is the top placing list, though. This is the one, the, the big list, and this one is pretty cool. Nothing too crazy, but we do see some tech cards. We do see the one Ogre Pond, one Mimikyu. Um, most, of, most of the Pokemon are one-offs, but then we see Sand True. This is a pretty interesting tech card with its ability Sand Screen. Trainer cards in your opponent's discard pile can be put into their deck by an effect of your opponent's item or supporter cards. This helps a lot in the Mirror matchup, but it also helps against, um, I mean, helps against Palpad, helps against Professor, no, not Professor Terror scenario. Though it does, if they're looping that, you can stop them from using Team Yell's Chair to loop that or Palpad. So that's what that's kind of used there for. And that's pretty solid, allowing you to just have a counter card, which is good against a good few matchups. And then we also have Genesect, which is the only new card in this list, I think. Uh, we see Night Stretcher too. But um, this card's pretty interesting with this ability, Ace Nullifier. And it says if this Pokemon is a, has a tool attached, then your opponent can't play any Ace spec cards from their hand. So uh, the good Ace spec cards that you're worried about are going to be... Uh, most likely there are some like any of them could be problematic theoretically but the big two are um the legacy energy i will just want to say real quick if your opponent is using lugia if you start with archaeops they can just get that into play with archaeops but if your opponent is running scoop up cyclone or more likely a prime catcher then they can use that as a switch which is obviously an issue in a deck where you're trying to stop your opponent from switching so genesect is really good for that just keep in mind if they boss or just knock out your genesect then they can play it but just be careful about that uh, they could also boss or just canceling clone it, and the canceling clone isn't so useful against this deck if they're not worried about the walls because they don't need to be worried about Snorlax. So, canceling clone, if your opponent does have something like Giratina V or Karidon in their deck in a um, uh, Richie Draco V star deck, then they can cancel and clone the Genesect and Prime Catcher and do stuff like that. So, keep that in mind. You also have the Blood Mirror Saloon EX, which attacks, does massive damage for cheap, and also has insane HP, 260 HP, highest HP in the game for a basic. Uh, in the game, I mean standard format. There are cards like um, uh, ADP, Arctis and Dialogue and Palkia GX, which has 280 HP and is really, really good. But Blood Mirror Saloon EX 260 only gives up two prizes as well. And, um, I mean, this card is just really, really good, really tanky, and uh, does really, really high damage as well. Then we have pretty similar stuff, as I said, in terms of Pokemon, and trainers are pretty similar as well. Nothing, like, insane. We do see TM Devolution, though. This, of course, devolves your opponent's Pokemon, and we do see Roseanne's backup. So uh, TM Devolution allows you to kind of counter rare candies, because rare candy, um, they can't just immediately evolve again. If they're playing something like... Like Richard Drake, if you start, you devolve them, pretty much that's not going to do anything unless devolving them gets a knockout because then they can just re-evolve. But with Roseanne's backup, you can team devolution a Charizard EX, then they very candy it again, and then devolve them again because Roseanne's backup recovers tools, special energies, Pokemon, and Stadiums. By the way, people often forget this recovers um, Pokemon. It does, and that's really nice. And then you have Professor, or sorry, not Professor Terrace. You have uh, Team Yell's Cheer, not in the deck because that recovers Pokemon. Uh, we have Night Stretch as well, but that is a good card, but not in this deck because you're just flying on Silene Palpad and Roseanne's backup can recover some of the cards you might be wanting Team Yell's Cheer to get or do something functionally similar. Um, or Silene. Silene often covers the pretty similar things, and just three pal pad, but uh, you do have the Pokemon recovery that you need. And then we also see Defiance Vest. I, I say this card's good, and I think it is good. I think um, one, I've, I've flip-flopped a lot about this card, but I think it's generally something I'd always include if you're playing multiple Bravery Charms. I'd say instead of three Bravery Charms, you should always play two Bravery Charms in the Defiance Vest, assuming you're playing a normal control list. Um, and the Ace Spec here is going to be Hero's Cape as well. But 
Anyways, Control is definitely, a, in my opinion, an interesting deck in the metagame right now. Snorlax isn't necessarily that interesting, and Iron Thorns EX isn't necessarily that interesting, but I do believe that um, also this deck is going to be terrible against Iron Thorns EX, but I think Control is in a pretty solid spot in the metagame with Pidgeot Control and certain other builds as well. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, tell me what you think of Control down below and what cards you would add to the deck, but I hope you enjoyed, and as always, I'm excited to see you in the next video.